All right, so um, this class is about identifying and reducing toxins. Um, and it's like your common household products. I can do like a series on this because um, there's so many things like lotions and makeups and stuff like that. But today I just focused on like common household products. Um, so the most common chemicals found are, I can't even say most of these. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even attempt it. <laughs> <laughs> I, there, these are the most common ones. Um, whatever that word is, flat phthalates. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's found in many fragranced household products, such as air fresheners, dish soap, and even toilet paper. Um, because of proprietary laws, companies don't actually have to disclose what's in their scents. So you won't actually find the ingredient, whatever this is, on the label. But if you see the word fragrance on a label, there's a good chance that they're present. Um, okay. That's something my mom has always told me is they can hide a lot of different things in the word fragrance. So yeah. if you see fragrance on anything, then it's probably not good. Okay. Um, here are the health risks. Um, men with higher... I should probably learn how to say this word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> compounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, men with higher compounds in their blood had reduced sperm counts, according to a study in 2003. Um, mm. And that's probably because it's a known endocrine disruptor, um, which means it interferes with the body's natural hormones. Mm. So it's in stuff like Febreze. Um, and then there's this one, uh, Perk. It's found in dry cleaning solutions, spot removers, and carpet and upholstery cleaners. Um, it's health, known health risks are, it's a neurotoxin. Um, it's also known as a possible carcinogen. People who live in residential buildings where dry cleaners are located have reported dizziness, loss of coordination, and other symptoms. Mm -hmm. It, I'm already in trouble. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We have all this stuff in our house still. <laughs> um, triclosan. Uh, it's found in most liquid dishwashing detergents and hand soaps labeled antibacterial. Um, its health risks are that it promotes growth of drug-resistant bacteria, which it gets rid of the antibiotics that we need. Um, there's some bacteria that we actually need. Um, to keep us healthy and our immune systems up. So, and then it disrupts endocrine function and is a probable carcinogen, which I'm pretty sure we have Cascade right now under our yeah, cabinet. Because I got something under my sink that I know it's not good. Yeah. Um, and then quaternary ammonium co compounds. Um, they're found in fabric softener liquids and sheets. Most household cleaners labeled antibacteria or antibacterial. And the health risks are that it's a skin irritant. It's also antimicrobial, like the other one we just did. And it's suspected as a culprit for respiratory disorders. That was my stomach. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, two butyl, I don't know how to say this one either. Um, it's found in window, kitchen, and multi-purpose cleaners. The health risks are that it causes sore throats when inhaled. It can contribute to narcosis, pulmonary edema, and severe liver and kidney damage. Um, the law does not require this ingredient to be listed in ingredients. So that's kind of scary. Yeah. Um, I know for sure, though, when I use Windex and, like, bleach, like Clorox bleach or whatever, like I always feel like a cold after I use it. It's yeah, weird. I don't feel good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like my nose is all runny and like my throat hurts. It's weird. Yes, yes. my throat definitely hurts. Um, and then there's ammonia. It's found in polishing agents for bathroom fixtures, sinks, and jewelry. And it's also in glass cleaner. I think there are some that are like ammonia free, but there's still some that have it in there. Um, and the health risks are that it will help develop chronic bronchitis and asthma and will create a poisonous gas if mixed with bleach. 
um, avenue, but and I already have asthma, so that, yeah. But, yeah, um, when I looked it up, it said people that already have disorders like asthma and stuff, like breathing disorders, um, it makes it even worse. And yeah. like uh, the people who clean your houses, like maids and stuff like that, who are exposed to ammonia like on a daily basis, th those are the ones that develop the chronic bronchitis wow. and asthma, even if they didn't have asthma before. Um, and then chlorine, I don't know if it's the same for like swimming pool water. You definitely shouldn't be drinking it, but <laughs> um, it's found in scouring powders, toilet bowl cleaners, mildew removers, laundry whiteners, and household tap water. Um, and the health risks are that they, they can be acute, but they can also be chronic. Um, it is a respiratory irritant at an acute level, but it may also be a serious thyroid disruptor. So that's something big for me because I have thyroid issues. My mom has thyroid. I know you have thyroid issues. Yeah. Uh, you definitely use this stuff. I know we have it. Yeah, I know I do too. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, sodium hydroxide is found in clean oven cleaners and drain openers. And the health risks are um, because it's extremely corrosive. If it touches your skin or gets in your eyes, it can cause severe burns. And inhalation can cause a sore throat that lasts for days. Mm. And now I have some um, natural solutions from the doTERRA blog page. Um, okay, so here's a, a all-purpose spray. I can send you the links if you want them to. Um, so here's the ingredients. It's way safer, obviously, than like bleach or Clorox. What uh, about the borax in it? Well, of course, there's only a teaspoon in it, so it's probably not bad. What I don't know. What is borax? I'm not sure what that is. I I thought borax that was actually something you could pick up from like Rite Aid or something. But I will warn you. Because my vet actually recommended using it for when my cat got a, like a sore eye. Mm -hmm. um, you actually put a very tiny bit of it in with um, water and it helps to like flush their eyes out in a very natural way rather than get medication. But they won't, if you tell them that you're going to use it for something, um, we'll say topical, they'll tell you that it's not a good idea. You're not supposed to ingest it. You're not supposed to do, you know, touch it on your skin or crazy things like that. It's really non-harmful and low doses, so you'd be, like, I mean, obviously, just like, you know, you don't want to eat a, inhale a thing of uh, baking soda, you know, I wouldn't inhale a thing of borax, but it's like a, just a thing you can get over the counter, it's, you don't have the prescription or anything for it, it's natural. Oh, okay. And one teaspoon, like I said, is probably not that bad in the whole mixture. Yeah, and the, it's 16 ounces in a teaspoon, so yeah. I don't think it would do anything. No, no, no. You'd be fine with a teaspoon. They just don't, and you're cutting it already with water, vinegar. Yeah. You're fine with that. It, it, they just get, like, weird because they think you're, um, like, diagnosing yourself and you do things like that. They're just crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, so, and then these are some oils. I have oils at the end that are good cleaning oils, but... Um, all these oils you put inside of it to help clean. And then here are all the directions. Um, yeah, I can send the links afterwards. So there's that one. And then there's a powder cleanser. Um, this one is to clean grimy surfaces. You sprinkle it on the surfaces, or surface, walk away for 15 to 30 minutes and then wipe it clean. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, again, you need borax, baking soda, citric acid, salt, and then lemon, which is a really good cleaning oil. Oh, and here's something about borax. It's natural, can be toxic when ingested, and should be kept away from children and pets. So. It's really cheap, honestly. It's one of those natural alternatives to any sort of uh, hard, toxic substance, honestly. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And it looks like you can use it in a spray, too. I just saw that. Yeah. So 
there's another one. And then glass cleaner. Um, just vinegar and distilled water. And then citrus oils, lemon, lime, grapefruit, wild orange, or a combination. Um, and the citrus oils I made, like an all-purpose cleaner um, with a recipe I found on Pinterest, and it has vinegar in it. And the citrus oils, like, almost mask the scent of the vinegar, because I hate the smell of vinegar, but mm -hmm. I put so much oils in it that I, like, you can still smell it because it's so strong, but it makes it a lot more bearable. Um, you want to make sure to put it in a glass bottle a glass spray bottle because um, the citrus oils are so potent that it'll pull the toxins out of the plastic and it will like burn the plastic, so. And then cleansing wipes with On Guard essential oil. Um, we also have a big line of On Guard stuff it ha there's detergent, there's the cleaner concentrate, um, toothpaste, stuff like that. Um, so here's the ingredients. You just need paper towels, water, fractionated coconut oil, the On Guard, lemon, and then the foaming hand wash to make wipes. And then the hand cleansing spray. It also has On Guard in it. Um, this would be better than like a hand sanitizer. Um, so yeah, that one looks super easy too. And then put it in a little glass bottle. And then here are the oils that are good for cleaning pretty much any of the citrus oils. Um, wild orange, lemon, lime, purify, and on guard. And here is the February promotions. This was a really short class, but um, the February promotions are that you save 10% on passion. If you get 125 PV or more, um, you get a free bottle of Aroma Touch. If you get 125 PV, actually, this was for the 15th of the month, so it's passed, but they're still doing the New Year, New You. They extended it, so any questions? Uh, not right now, but I know I'll think of them after I get off. <laughs> That's okay. And I'll send you the link, um, the links to all the cleaners and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Um, well, that was it. <laughs> so I'll send you okay. the links. Can I have your PowerPoint? Uh, yeah, I'll send that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Uh-huh. Bye.